Hello, welcome once again to another episode of the History Lectures. This is Sergeant, and we will talk about Aguinaldo's proclamation of independence. So now, um, I have 10 points that I'd like to share to you about the Declaration of Independence. And uh, that would form our analysis, the 10 uh, points about the document. Are you ready? So let's focus and uh, discuss the 10 points about the document Aguinaldo's uh, proclamation speech. All right. So here is uh, our analysis. Number one. Okay. Declaration of independence is different from attainment of independence. So when you say declaration, it's just saying it. But having it is another story. So what happened on June 12 is only a declaration of independence not attainment of independence. Remember what I said last time? It's not 100% of the Philippines that was free from Spanish rule. Probably just 99% because there's still Manila and a few towns that still had Spaniards in them. So Aguinaldo just uh, rounded it off and the chose June 12 to tell the world that we were a free nation already. Actually, uh, Mabini um, didn't uh, agree with Aguinaldo on the Declaration of Independence. He said that uh, it's premature, Mr. Aguinaldo, to declare independence because uh, first and foremost, uh, we are not yet free at that, at that point in time. The Spaniards were still around, although they were just few. So attainment of independence really happened on uh, July 4, 1946, around half a century later. Okay, so that's the time when we were really free, when the Americans left our country and we had self-rule for the very first six times according to the historian Ampet Ocampo and the June 12 declaration is not the first time that uh, we declared independence from Spain before Aguinaldo there was Bonifacio who declared independence actually two times but the bigger one was the cry of Pugadlawin when, when Bonifacio asked all the Katiponeros with him to tear their cedula and to shout long live the Philippines long live independence and that is according to the uh, historians most historians actually uh, especially the pro-Bonifacio historians, they, they say that that is already tantamount to Declaration of Independence. Saying that uh, we are no longer part of Spain when you tear your cedula, that's the meaning of it. You are detaching yourself from the authority who issued the cedula. So that is a Declaration of Independence. And um, many uh, say that that should be our Independence Day, not June 12, because uh, they want to uh, give focus to Bonifacio as the real um, face of the revolution, not Aguinaldo. So many historians believe that uh, Bonifacio should uh, even be called the first president, not Aguinaldo. And so there was a clamor for uh, the rewriting of Philippine history, making Bonifacio the first president and making the cry of Pugadlawin as the real 
Declaration of Independence. So I know you can uh, you can search for uh, Facebook groups uh, out there, and uh, there are some uh, pro Aguinaldo, anti Bonifacio Facebook groups and uh, Facebook personalities who would really defend their side that Aguinaldo uh, deserves to be the first president and June 12 is the real Independence Day. Whereas there are other people out there in social media and uh, also from the academe, okay, professors and, and um, even uh, some uh, government officials who would say that Bonifacio is the first president and uh, the Independence Day is the cry of Pugadlawi. Anyway, so uh, that's that's just uh, my point okay, in uh, this uh, list that uh, June 12 is not our one and only Independence Day declaration. Okay? Uh, the other uh, declarations, of course, would be uh, the, the one that uh, when Laurel in 1943 uh, declared that uh, we are uh, now uh, a republic okay, and it's a Japanese-sponsored republic. Okay, so that's one declaration and the other is the July 4, 1946 declaration and attainment of independence. So there were many declarations of independence. This is not the only one. Okay? Number three, there were a lot of historical mistakes in Aguinaldo's speech. And uh, you notice that uh, if you would read the document itself. But nonetheless, it was a nice try to remind the audience of our history. So, uh, Aguinaldo, or maybe his uh, speechwriter, mixed up a lot of uh, personalities in the uh, Philippine history. He, he mixed up um, Magellan's time with Legaspi's time, and uh, he even uh, gave a wrong name to the hero of the Battle of Mactan. <laughs> Instead of Lapu Lapu, uh, he he mentioned uh, Kalipulaku, which is uh, just a just like a sounds like version of Lapu Lapu. I don't know. Maybe uh, this guy who wrote the speech uh, wasn't listening to his uh, history teacher when uh, he was a student. <laughs> uh, anyway, so there were several historical mistakes in the speech, but it's a nice effort. Okay, so we still commend the speechwriter that uh, he is he is uh, seeing history as a big tool in unifying the nation. He sees the role of knowing the past for us to move on in the present. He is seeing the value of looking at our roots to see the greatness of our genes and so we will have pride in our nation so that's a nice try or that's a nice move by Aguinaldo and his uh, speech writer uh, we studied this uh, the reasons why we study history and they also recognized this in 1898 so Aguinaldo looked back or made the the audience look back at our history to develop pride and unity as a nation. Number four, we see uh, Rizal having a big role in the revolution. He was mentioned in the speech of Aguinaldo, or the proclamation speech, okay, written by uh, by Bautista, okay, and uh, he, he, he Rizal was said to be uh, the spark of the revolution. He wrote something in his uh, prison cell that made the Katiponeros fight better yeah, and uh, fight uh, for victory harder. Okay? And what is that uh, thing that Rizal wrote in his prison cell? The poem that uh, we now know as Ang Huling Paalam or My Last Farewell Mi Ultimo Adios that is the uh, poem that inspired the Katipuneros to fight harder. Okay, so Rizal wrote that in his prison cell. 
he hid the little paper the size of a one-fourth uh, paper folded it uh, several uh, times to make it really small and uh, hid it in the uh, in the lamp or uh, the little mini stove that he gave to his sister and uh, he told his sister there is something inside so that the Spanish guards watching over them would not understand and when sister went home opened the the stove he found the little paper and it says there uh, adios patria adorada and, and that poem was uh, taken by uh, Pathiano okay, Grisel's brother who was a general and uh, shared it to Andres Bonifacio his boss and Andres Bonifacio gave it a title and translated it in Tagalog and uh, have it taught to the Katiponeros and they fought better and harder and they won okay, in many battles the Katipuneros uh, who got inspired of Rizal's poem. So even though uh, Rizal, uh, according to some historians, was uh, a man of peace and uh, he doesn't want uh, a war, whether he likes it or not, he became the inspiration of the fighters. He became uh, the spark that made the revolution bigger. Because before Rizal's death, there were uh, just a few areas and a few people fighting but after his death there were more places and more people who joined the war versus Spain and that's Jose Rizal for you number five obviously Bonifacio was not mentioned in the speech yes <laughs> what for because he's the enemy of Aguinaldo He's uh, the rival of Aguinaldo, so uh, naturally uh, Aguinaldo's speech writer wouldn't include the heroics of Bonifacio in the speech. Uh, that's sad. Uh, the, the other heroes were mentioned in the speech, like uh, Lapu Lapu, um, the Gomburza, Jose Rizal, okay, those who made a contribution to in the fight okay, versus Spain but Bonifacio of all people uh, was not mentioned he started it he started the revolution but he's not mentioned in the speech very sad and you know uh, going back to the present you know connecting the past and the present we see this in many of our uh, places especially in politics here in the Philippines. You're, if you are a, a politician, you wouldn't mention the accomplishments of your political rival. You would only glorify yourself. And uh, even though your political opponent really have done something significant, uh, you would flush it down, flush it away, so that uh, pe the people will not remember your enemy so very sad uh, what kind of nation are we so we have seen this happening already in the past it's continuing in the present I think we should do something to change this kind of culture of ours number six the revolution at first was Luzon centric um, we can see this uh, in the speech that um, there were eight original provinces who fought the Spaniards. Uh, the, the race of the sun in our flag represent these eight provinces. Okay, so you know the eight provinces, Laguna is one of them. For you to easily remember them, uh, you, can you can divide it into uh, two groups, four and four. Four in Southern Tagalog, and four in Central Luzon. The one in Southern Tagalog, the four in Southern Tagalog is Luzo, which is a Laguna, uh, Batangas, Cavite, and Morong. Now, Morong is the old name of Rizal Province. Okay? 
So before, the whole province is called Morong. And part of the province is Manila. Okay, so you have there uh, the towns like Antipolo, uh, Baras, uh, Montalban, you know the places there uh, in uh, Rizal province. So that is the old Morong province. So those are the four provinces in southern Tagalog. Morong, Laguna, Cavite, Batangas. Okay, these are our neighbors. Now, going to central Luzon, there are four provinces there also that are represented by the, the rays of the sun. Okay, go, if you're going to Baguio, what are the provinces that you will pass by? Okay, uh, Bulacan, Pampanga, okay, uh, Nueva Ecija is mentioned, and um, in, uh, in Aguinaldo's speech, he mentioned Bataan. Okay. Now, some historians would say Tarlac is the eighth province. Now, I think... During that time, Bataan, Tarlac, and Zambales is just one big province in that time. So, I, I think Aguinaldo was correct in saying that uh, Bataan is the eighth province. It's also Tarlac because they're just one province together at that time. Okay? So, those were the eight uh, provinces wherein the revolution raged on in 1896. Okay, those were the provinces where uh, you have Katipunero chapters okay, or Katipunero members, Katipunan members. And then uh, they simultaneously attacked the Spaniards in 1896. And so the Spaniards were really uh, surprised to see a very uh, widespread uh, rebellion or fight against them. Before 1896, they, they only encountered small uh, fights or rebellions that is just uh, maybe just one province wide. But this time, it's eight provinces. So it's a widespread fight. But uh, it's still Luzon-centric because the other parts of the Philippines uh, had no uh, war at that time okay? like in the Visayas and uh, Mindanao there were no Katipuneros or uh, Katipunan uh, battles but we know that there's one uh, guy from uh, Panay Island who, who is uh, a Katipunan member actually he has the same family name as uh, mine uh, he is uh, surnamed Castillo and he's the one who donated the printing press uh, to Emilio Jacinto to write the Kalayaan newspaper. So we know that there is a Visayan chapter. But uh, battles in 1896, we have yet to discover or to unearth. So that's the reason why we need to research more about uh, local history. What happened in Bicol? What happened in Ilocos? What happened in Palawan? What happened in Cebu? Uh, what happened in uh, Leyte and Samar? When the revolution was uh, ongoing in 1896 in those eight provinces. So, the uh, natural uh, flow of events would be the, those places joined the revolution after the death of Rizal. Okay? After the death of Rizal. And uh, how about uh, Mindanao? They were already fighting the Spaniards even without the 1896 revolution. During the time of the Moro Wars, okay, the time when uh, the, the, the Spanish explorers were trying to have a foothold in, in uh, Luzon and uh, Visayas, Mindanao was already fighting the Spaniards and they won. They were able to uh, drive away the Spaniards, the, the, con the conquerors, from landing in their places. So the, the Muslims in Mindanao were able to preserve their religion and culture. So, so for them, Andres Bonifacio was not, is not really a hero because they themselves were able to 
drive away the Spaniards even without the Katipunan, even without Bonifacio, they were successful already in uh, keeping their place Spaniard free. So the revolution, according to some critics, is Luzon-centric. But uh, we cannot uh, deny the fact that the revolution spread to Visayas and parts of Mindanao also uh, many, many uh, uh, months after, okay, after the uh, death of Rizal. So the beginnings was Luzon-centric, but the ending was not. It became nationwide. Okay, number seven. Aguinaldo presented his side of the Biak de Bato deal okay, in the speech. So, of course, this is his chance to glorify his action and to justify why he entered the deal uh, in Biak de Bato. So, remember that uh, he quit the revolution and he's saying that, no, I didn't quit. Uh, it's just a time out. It's just a truce. Uh, because what happened is, uh, actually, I bought guns and ammunition and continued the fight later on. So, the speech that uh, was uh, read on that day presented Aguinaldo's side. And in fact, he glorified uh, the Biak Nabato deal. And didn't consider it as something bad or uh, a negative blow to the revolution. Number eight, do you know that our national anthem had a very long evolution? The uh, original is just music. Dun, 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 it's just uh, played by the brass band of uh, uh, the Caviteños. Okay, and um, the, the words, okay, the original lyrics were actually in Spanish. And they were just added months later, after June 12. The one who wrote the lyrics was a, uh, a soldier journalist, okay, multitasking. <laughs> he's a soldier and he's a journalist under the command of uh, General Luna. Okay? Uh, his name is Jose Palma. He only has one eye. The other eye has a defect. And uh, one uh, night, he was uh, probably bored, so he wrote a poem entitled Filipinas. And uh, the first line goes uh, like this, Tierra Adorada. What is Tierra Adorada? Adorada is, uh, sounds like the English word adore. And Tierra is the Spanish word that sounds like the English or the Latin uh, terra, or the English terrain, which means land. So put them together, tierra adorada, land that I adore. In Tagalog, bayang magiliw. So that is the original lyrics in Spanish, okay? Tierra adorada. And um, that, that's just a poem, actually. He doesn't intend to make it the lyrics of the song. He published it in a newspaper called La Independencia. Okay, and the newspaper was founded by General Antonio Luna. And uh, the people who read the poem in the newspaper said, Oh, this is a very nice poem. Why don't we try mixing it with the Marcha Nacional? And, and uh, presto, they jive together okay, perfectly and so we had a national anthem now with lyrics okay, and the lyrics says Chera Adorada now that was in uh, in 1899 you know, and um, 1900 during the, the Phil Am War but uh, we lost the, the war and the Americans uh, became the new masters of our uh, land and uh, during, during the American period, uh, they taught us the English language, which became very popular. And so the national anthem, they taught us to sing that in English. And the English version says, Land of the morning, child of the sun returning. Okay. 
so that's the national anthem that we sang during the American period particularly during Commonwealth and during the Declaration of Independence in 1946 the attainment of independence in 1946 we were singing our national anthem in English we only had the Tagalog version that we have now beginning in 1956 during the term of President Ramon Magsaysay so President Magsaysay ordered the translation of Land of the Morning into Tagalog so now we have it as Lupang Hinirang Bayang Magiliw uh, yeah, the, the real name is uh, Lupang Hinirang but uh, kids call it Bayang Magiliw So we, we had the original lyrics just beginning in the 1950s. So that's just that, that's around the half a century later that it had Tagalog lyrics or Filipino lyrics. So we had a really long evolution of our national anthem. Number nine, this probably surprised you the most because uh, Number nine says that our flag, after all, is a copycat variant of the American flag. Wow. When I was a little boy, my elementary teacher would teach us the meaning of the colors of our flag. And I, I believe you also were taught the same. Huh? Children! Red means war! Bravery! Blue means peace! White means purity! Very good children! That is the meaning of our flag. But if you would read the original, okay, primary source, the speech itself that was read on that day on June 12, 1898, you would see that the red, white, and blue of our flag is actually to give credit or to uh, make sip sip, no? or to, to, to uh, give a, a sign of gratitude to our dear friend, the great North American nation. And what is that great North American nation? The United States of America. We are making our flag red, white, and blue also as a sign of gratitude to them. Because they helped us uh, in uh, our fight versus Spain. And uh, Aguinaldo approved that idea. Uh, or actually, he, he is the one who made that idea to to make that uh, red white and blue the colors of our flag because he is the one who commissioned the making of the flag he's the one who made the design he told the ladies in Hong Kong make a flag and he probably drew it and uh, told them this is the this is the color scheme red white and blue so it was actually Aguinaldo it was his idea to make our flag a copycat of the US flag wow so I'm not inventing things this is written in the primary source so that's the beauty actually of reading primary documents okay so what do we do now with our flag <laughs> well Uh, some say that uh, maybe you should change it. Some people say no, don't you don't you change it because we have been used to it. It's more it's more than a hundred years already, 120 plus years that we are using it. Why change it? If yes, then what's a better design for a flag? Well, think about that. Okay, and. Um, Oh, but by the way, the, the other symbols in the flag are okay. I'm not saying that uh, our flag is really terrible. 
but uh, some parts of it are okay like the sun okay the sun represents uh, national unity uh, Aguinaldo mentioned it as uh, the sun is uh, casting its rays on uh, everybody in the Philippines the Christians the Muslims the Aitas the Mangyans the Igorots uh, and uh, all the other tribes in the mountains and it symbolizes unity and, and so yeah that's nice nice and then he also mentioned about the stars uh, representing the three islands uh, in his speech he mentioned Luzon uh, Mindanao and Panay okay but now we are saying that uh, the one of the stars is Visayas okay? because Panay is an island in the Visayas so probably uh, Aguinaldo thought that uh, these are the three biggest islands of our archipelago. He's correct in Luzon and Mindanao. They are one and two. But the third biggest island is Samar, also in the Visayas. But maybe uh, they didn't know yet because uh, they don't have uh, uh, high-tech uh, equipment then to count or to measure um, land and see that Samar is larger than Panay. But anyway, nice idea to say that uh, the the flag represents the whole country okay Visayas okay, the islands there represented by the second star okay and then Luzon and then Mindanao it's uh, it's also a symbol of national unity so that's nice also okay number 10 is Aguinaldo was gullible he thought that the Americans were friends and he didn't sense that they would be our next colonizers. That's the sad thing, you know. So he was believing all the while that America would help us. And after eliminating the Spaniards, they would give us independence, give us self-rule, and leave the country in the hands of Aguinaldo he, and uh, it didn't happen that way and Aguinaldo didn't see it coming but uh, some of many or a few of his advisors saw that coming I don't know if he didn't see it really or he just didn't listen to his advisors um, two of them okay, were Mabini who told Aguinaldo that uh, be careful of the Americans and uh, another one was General Antonio Luna. And Aguinaldo just didn't listen to those two. Or uh, maybe uh, he, he didn't really believe in uh, what they're saying. And the sad thing is, there, we, we uh, got into a war with the Americans and we lost that war. If you watch the movie General Luna, uh, there's a nice uh, scene there wherein uh, Luna was talking in the meeting, telling Aguinaldo to really watch the Americans. And uh, he sensed that the Americans were not sincere. In sabi, sabi ni Luna, he said, Girahin na natin sila. Let's now fight the Americans because at that time the Americans were landing already in Manila. Their troops are already uh, there landing and there were just around 5,000 Americans on land. And uh, the Philippine army, uh, the estimate would be around 30,000. And then uh, Luna said that uh, these Americans are suspicious. Why aren't they leaving? The, um, the Spaniards are al already eliminated. But uh, they, they are not leaving. Instead, they are uh, adding more to their troops. 5,000 became 20,000. 20,000 became 50,000. And then uh, Luna said, uh, let's make war with them. But Aguinaldo would not listen. And then the Americans were already 100,000, uh, 120,000. And uh, Aguinaldo still isn't suspicious. Why are they building up their 
uh, armed forces here. Right? And Luna was saying they're going to colonize us. So, sayang, no? we could have uh, defeated them okay, when they were just 5,000 and we were 30,000. But we let them swell to 120,000 and then the war broke out. So what can 30,000 soldiers, okay, Filipino soldiers, do versus 120,000 American soldiers complete with high-powered firearms, okay, well-trained, okay, while we, we only had a, a ragtag uh, army with uh, just a few guns, a few bullets, and the rest is history. We lost that war. And Aguinaldo, being the leader, should have uh, sensed that uh, the Americans were up to something. So he's too gullible to believe that uh, the Americans were friends. Anyway, uh, it's, it's done. Okay? So what we can do now is just learn from the, the mistakes of the past and uh, do better in our time in the future or here in the present. Alright, so what have we just accomplished? We have talked about the Declaration of Independence in 1898. Okay? That was done by our uh, uh, president, first president, uh, Emilio Aguinaldo, okay? president of the first Philippine Republic. And so uh, we will close the lesson now and uh, we will have a continuation of the fight for independence in our next meeting. We will talk about Mabini. Alright, so this has been Sergeant saying goodbye and thank you.